Albuquerque, New Mexico. On December 29, 1998, in the city's northeast section, for the employees and customers of a local bank, the day started much like any other. What they did not know was that a man who had already robbed one bank earlier that morning was about to make another withdrawal. When the robber approaches the teller, he asks her to give him money from the cash drawer. Okay, I have a gun, and this is a robbery. Mm -hmm. Trained to always comply with a robber's request and avoid any dangerous confrontation, the teller gives the man what he asks for, and more. She slips the man a bundle of cash containing an exploding dye pack. I have this gun, and I will use it, so. The robber slips out as quietly as he entered. Albuquerque 911, where is your emergency? This is a bank robbery. The alarm goes out to local police. And because bank robbery is a federal offense, the FBI. Special agents Scott Campbell and John Tanberg respond from the FBI's Albuquerque resident agency. It begins as a routine call for Special Agent Tanberg. Albuquerque has had per capita more than its uh, share of bank robberies. In the late 90s, we were uh, in the neighborhood of 90 to 100 bank robberies per year. Yet this case will be anything but routine. Agents learn the bandit was strangely calm. Most of the people in the bank had no idea that it had even been robbed. There was no commotion, there was no what they would think and had seen previously on TV of bank robberies with shots fired or people yelling. The tellers remember nothing distinctive about him. Well, this physical description that we received was of a uh, white male, possibly Hispanic, dark hair, average build, wearing sunglasses, uh, fairly neat haircut, wearing a ball cap, and uh, not very distinctive clothing. Despite a thorough examination, technicians recover no usable prints from the teller counter or doors. Appreciate that. They find no other physical evidence. We try. Investigators suspect an electronic witness may have observed the robber. The primary security countermeasure that a bank will have would be uh, surveillance cameras. Sometimes they're high quality, sometimes they're not. In this case, the cameras were not of much help. They show the robber, but the quality is not good. We didn't retrieve any significant information from the surveillance tapes of either of those two bank robberies. They weren't particularly good images. We didn't get a good angle of uh, the face. I believe that there may have been a, a good shot of the top of his ball cap, but uh, nothing that gave us any significant facial features. The robbers simply walked into two banks in one day, took their cash, and walked out. He left no prints, no evidence, and beat the bank's surveillance systems. He left the FBI nothing that would help them identify him. There wasn't a whole lot of information that we had to work with. We didn't believe that this was somebody that had uh, hit any of the Albuquerque area banks in the past. We uh, were not... Uh, in a position to connect him to anything that had occurred prior to this. So in our minds, this could potentially be a traveler. Take your fingers, I'm gonna call this in. Agents spread out across the area and talk with everyone who lived near the bank. They are looking for anyone who may have seen the robber. Anyone who could give them a positive ID. Agents get a break when they find a witness. A neighbor who lived behind the bank saw a man running out of the bank and around the corner back behind the bank. And then, a cloud of red mist. Agents realize it must have been the dye pack. This is their man. This witness provided a full license plate number of a vehicle registered in the state of Nevada. 
This confirms their suspicions. The robber does not appear to be from Albuquerque. With that license plate, we ran through our dispatch center uh, registration in Nevada and came up with a registered owner and an address of um, the vehicle was registered at. But the address is to a motel off the Las Vegas Strip, perhaps a cover to throw off the cops. The agents have hit a dead end. They try another tack and run the plate number through a credit bureau. They get a hit. The FBI finds the loan is registered to another address in Wyoming. An agent there interviews the registered owner. He asks him where he was on the day the robberies occurred. The man replies he was in Wyoming, interviewing for his job as a postal worker, an alibi corroborated by his supervisor. He was a law-abiding citizen and did not have any knowledge of any uh, criminal activity that was that was associated with his vehicle that uh, was in Albuquerque. The man explains he no longer has possession of the car. His ex-wife Carlita uses it, and she lives in Albuquerque. 